So today I'll pretty much talk about everything involving how I make these videos. From what I use to how I film and how I edit, I will try and go through everything. Starting off with my camera, which I'm using right now, it is a Sony a7 IV and a Tamron 17 to 28 lens. The other lens I have is a Sony 50mm. I usually use this for more dramatic shots and this lens when I'm just sitting here talking. I also have an ND filter for this lens, which I use outside if it's really sunny. This Manfrotto tripod is the one I use if I'm traveling or going to the gym. That way I don't have to carry around a huge one. And the mic I'm using right now is the Rode Wireless Go 2. I also have this little light, which I don't use a ton, but pretty cool to have. Whenever I'm recording at my desk, I use the Elgato key light and ring light. These are fire for good lighting. And then for editing, I use my 2021 M1 MacBook Pro. I kind of want to upgrade to the 16 inch soon, but we'll see. And then I have three one terabyte hard drives, which I use to put my projects on. That way I don't take up all the space on my Mac. JBL speaker, which isn't really necessary, but I use it every time I edit. I think that is pretty much everything. When it comes to filming, the first thing I do before I even pick up a camera is plan the video. It's almost like in school when you do an outline for an essay, I pretty much do the same thing in my notes. Now that I have it planned out, I will start filming. The main things I do in setting up a shot is to make sure that it is level, that the lighting is good, and that what I want is in focus. For shots like this when I'm just talking, I usually shoot 1080-60. For cinematic shots, I will shoot 1080-120, which means I'm shooting 1080p at 120fps. And since I edit at 30fps, I'm able to slow it down at 25%. And for some reason, slow motion just always looks way cooler. And for most of the cinematic shots, I'll go with a 50mm, but sometimes I do use this lens. When I'm talking, my shutter speed is 1 over 50, aperture is f2.0. 8, and my ISO is usually on auto. For cinematic shots, my shutter speed is 1 over 125, aperture is f2.8, and ISO, I'll either keep it on auto or set it if it's changing a lot. When I'm just talking, I'll either have my camera on a tripod, or if I'm walking around doing like a room tour, I'll have one of my roommates record me. For all the cinematic stuff, I usually just go handheld and film it myself. Pretty much all I've learned about making videos has been through trial and error, so I may not be the most technical person, but I like to think I'm pretty good. Obviously in this video, you've had a good bit of examples of basic talking clips, so here's a few cinematic So most of these were shot on the 50 mil, and as you can probably tell, it's just a more dramatic look and focus. Because the difference between 50 and 17 is pretty big. So now it is time for my favorite part of the video making process, which is editing. As I said earlier, I use my MacBook to edit instead of my $2,000 gaming PC for some reason. The software that I use is Final Cut Pro, and I've been using that right since I got my Mac in 2021. So pretty much everything I know, I've learned on this thing. To demonstrate how I edit, I'm actually gonna edit the clips you just saw and try my best to give tips and tricks along the way. Like I said earlier, I keep all my projects on external hard drives. That way it doesn't take up all the storage on my Mac because I think I only have like 500 gigs on here. So whenever I start a new project, I'll go ahead and give it a title. Resolution 1920 by 1080. And then for the rate, I edit at 30 FPS. So what I'll do is I'll highlight everything and then drag it onto here. But the first step toward actually editing is finding music. And it is kind of challenging sometimes, especially for YouTube because you have to find non-copyright music if you want to make money off the video, which I need to do. I wish I could just use like Kanye or somebody, but a lot of times what I'll do is I will pull up YouTube. I mean, basically just search non-copyright music. It's like a lo-fi remix of Hide by Juice World. A lot of, you know, kind of popular music, there's remixes and stuff that is non-copyright, but sometimes that is kind of hard to find. So now since I picked out the song, I want to kind of slowly fade it in from you know the talking point to the cinematic shots and i'm gonna have it fade up right to where the beat drops a lot of times you know usually it's more outside but it's really cool to kind of use plants and things like that as the foreground and you know in the background where your focus is have your subject so as you can see in this one i have you know my off-white clock and i kind of have the plant right there since I shot at 120 FPS, I'm gonna go ahead and slow it down. I like that, so I'm gonna just run with it. I'm actually gonna do a speed ramp right here because I really like this clip and it needs to end right there, but the problem is I don't want it you know, in slow motion for two, se two and a half seconds, which doesn't sound like a lot in theory, but when you're watching a video and something's on the screen for you know longer than usual, it kind of gets boring. So I'm only gonna show that clip for a few seconds since the beat drop is right there. The shot of the JBL speaker though, that looks like straight out of a commercial. I think the biggest thing for like, especially cinematic stuff is to always have some sort of movement. Another thing I am gonna do, so that way I have a little bit more to work with, I'm gonna add an adjustment layer 
crop out the top and bottom, 100 pixels on both. I'm not sure what it is about, you know, just the skinnier frame, but it definitely does look a lot more cinematic. And I think that looks great right there. But what it also allows me to do is it allows me to move the kind of framing around without having to zoom in. I can even move this a little farther down. That way, when I play it, it's perfectly centered. Everything looks good. You never really want a bunch of empty space in the frame. A few kind of key things we've done already. We have the black bars on top and bottom. We have six clips already. And then this one, we did another speed ramp. I usually try and aim for about 15 to 30 seconds for cinematic portions of the video and montages or B-roll, whatever you want to call it. As you kind of film more and more, there are some kind of tricks you learn, especially with transitions. One of the things that I've always kind of been interested in and enjoy doing is like mask transition. Basically, something covers the whole screen, moves across, and transition it to the next scene. It looks very clean. So while I was recording the PC one, I recorded it to where it kind of went through the case, the black bars on the case. That way I might be able to transition it to something else. So we'll see. I like filmed it right next to my black hoodie. That way I'm gonna try and like, I'm gonna try and make that like the transition. We'll see if I can do it though. Now what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna go over to my effects. I'm gonna type mask, draw a mask, start right there. So you're gonna do a keyframe, which is hitting that little button, making that yellow. That way we can move it around. I'm gonna switch it to 50, that way I can go outside of the box. A few moments later. Okay, so let's see how that looks. I like that. I think that's good. Another thing I like to do, you see how, so there's no black bars right here, obviously. And then as we go forward, they just are there. What I like to do to make it a kind of smoother transition, I like to keyframe four frames in probably should be good. A little bit smoother, but for some reason, my SD card reader sucks. So for this clip, I was moving to the right, whereas in the other one, like in the transition, I'm moving to the left. And since I don't wanna go like left, right, I'd rather it flow smoothly. I'm gonna slow this one down, but I'm also gonna reverse it. I think I like this, let me watch it through a little bit. Probably just gonna do a few more. I feel like we've got a good little, little thing going. One thing I do like to add is a add another adjustment layer. What I'll usually do is just shoot with no color profile and then add a LUT, this one for example, and then I'll usually put it to like either 0.3 to 0.4. That way you know it's not too much of a, of a change. Even right now, I'll go ahead and show on screen what it would look like with the LUT versus without. I have this little clip with a 50 mil and then it keeps the same exact shot. So it'll go like that. I'm not even gonna keep that last part. So now I'm gonna bring in the talking clip. I'm gonna leave the music on in the background. So what I wanna do, what I, what I kinda plan on doing is switch it before that is. So the difference between 50 and 17 switches the camera view and says it's pretty big. As of right now, I think we're good. So you'll have already seen this part of the video, by the way, but now you're just kind of seeing me edit it, which is kind of weird. Right now on the video, I'll go ahead and show the whole clip again. This is what I just edited, kind of right in front of you. That is a small part of the video, which is, Kind of crazy because it pretty much took me like probably 45 minutes to edit. So now that you've seen what I use, how I film, how I edit, I hope this has given you value in one way or another. If there are any questions you have that I didn't cover because there was a lot of material, let me know down in the comments. If this helped you or you enjoyed this video, please make sure to drop a like and subscribe. As always, thank you for watching. Um,